Hello, you lovely lot. So, I've been thinking a bit recently. As a lot of you will know, I teach QGIS or QGIS, whatever you want to call it, um, online. And uh, it's got to be one of the best tools out there, especially the fact that it's open source for building up um, an overview, an image of how an area looks so you can layer over lidar data you can layer over old maps new maps old aerial photography etc and it's fantastic but i accept that it's got a bit of a learning curve and not all of you are up for learning it and you'll do what a lot of people do and that is revert to what's out there that i can easily access for free and an example of that uh, certainly here in the uk is lidar finder and nls um National Library of Scotland, side-by-side -side LiDAR Finder. And both of these, the representation is slightly different, but they are both using the same data set to create this LiDAR image. Um, what we're looking at here is a place in Hampshire called Danebury Hillfort, which I thought would be a pretty good example because we've got a distinct feature here that we can focus on and have a look at. So... If you don't want to get into Q QGIS, I highly recommend you do and have a look at my other videos because there's a 2024 vid for getting started with it and it doesn't take that long to get up to speed. But if you're really reluctant to do it, how can you get better LiDAR easier um, to help with your metal detecting or archaeological adventures to have a look at different areas and understand what's going on? Um, and then I had a bit of a light bulb moment, and that is that ChatGPT recently had a major upgrade. And as part of that upgrade, they started supporting a lot of GIS files, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, including GeoTIFFs, which is the file format that we can download in the UK from the likes of the Environment Agency. Um, and the difference here, one of these composite DTM, which is a digital terrain uh, map yes <laughs> I had to think about that no no it's not digital terrain model um, uh, there's also a digital surface model the only difference between the two is the surface one has trees and houses etc whereas in the terrain one they're stripped back the difference is this is a 3d model so imagine like in a game or something like that you can look at this model from any angle you can put light wherever you like, um, so you can light across from the east or the west and put the sun at different heights or interact it with it in many other ways. And the, the, that's fantastic, but typically you need a little bit of knowledge using something like QGIS to interpret that, um, which is what I teach online. And then you have the online resources like LiDAR Finder, like uh, another CyberSide. But this is a static image. It's not an interactive image. It's not using, well, it, once upon a time it used this data, but somebody has decided this is the best view of that thing. And this is how we're gonna show it to you. And you can't do anything more about it. It is what it is. So it's restricting like that. Um, and I'm gonna try and give you a way to get much better um, LiDAR imagery and other imagery you can't get online to help with your uh, research adventures. So this is a great example. You can see here we've got the one meter it will be uh, model for this area and we are going to try and beat this image with a lower resolution file and the reason being is ChatGPT still only supports maximum file size of 50 megabytes so most of the one meter data sets are going to be more than that. Um, so we're going to use the two meter data set and all I've done is I've popped over to the environment agency um, I've put in Danbury ring look here in Hampshire uh, I've drawn out I've clicked down download button I've drawn out my little area and then I've clicked get available tiles and instead of having the one meter I've changed it to the two meter resolution and I've downloaded it here uh, because I'm on rural broadband I thought I'd make a head start and upload that same file to chat GPT ready to put in my prompt because otherwise we could be here a while um, and this has been the tough part interacting with chat GPT and getting it to do what you want it to do 
it can be a bit hit and miss if you've ever played like games back in the day like zork where you had a text prompt and if you didn't get it quite right now nah, you've got no chance it's a bit like that but once you've got those text prompts right it really does work so i've uploaded the the tiff file if i press the attach button i can show you it's this one here the 21.9 megabytes is not a big file and that's from that um two meter dtm so i'm going to write a prompt say this is a two meter lidar derived dtm file and i'm going to ask it to create a hill shade and that's what these are the hill shade so the light is has been set at an angle and it's shining light across the scene and what's quite restrictive about both of these and it's they're right to do so but these are restricted at what's called a z factor of one that means if you strip back the land and you took a photo down and you could take a photo in sort of monochrome with no land or anything there it would look like this but <laughs> it's really hard sometimes to make out the features when you haven't got any kind of exaggeration so i can see there's kind of a line there perhaps there's some features here but that you kind of like find yourself staring at it like a magic eye and what we can do in qgis is we can up something called the z factor and it's like almost like increasing the contrast it's it probably takes something that's a centimetre, and when you make it a z-factor of two, it makes that centimetre thing two centimetres. When it's a z-factor of three, it triples it, etc, etc. Okay, so we've uploaded our file now, our geotiff, and we're going to write our prompt. This is a two metre LiDAR-derived DTM geotiff create a hill shade with a z factor of 15 using matplotlib and the reason i want to use matplotlib is whilst experimenting with this um chat gpt just randomly throws in different ways of doing stuff and it all changes and you end up with completely different results so i want to specify what i want uh chat gpt to create it in it's also worth pointing out as well that it needs to be the 4.0 model um to do this kind of analysis and you do get access to that for free and you can have like a few prompts a day so you can totally do this uh, on your own time without any investment um and hopefully you'll get some good results too and there it is there's our hill shade with a z factor of 15. uh and i can see <laughs> straight away i'm going to download it um so we can chuck it up here but when you compare that to the likes of lidar finder and nls and now bear in mind as well it's half the resolution so i'm gonna to have to zoom in manually it's half the resolution but in terms of detail in terms of what you can see versus sources available online you can start picking out so many features um, around an area which you cannot see with these online tools now i'll always advise you to go and learn qgis in your own time because ultimately that's where you will have the best results but if you are in a pinch you're in a rush you want to quickly look at an area this is one way you can totally do that and get some incredible results and that's just a hill shade um there's plenty more you can do as well if i go back here we can ask it to do a slope analysis which is something else we use in qgis and slope whereas a hill shade is like chucking the sun in in the sky and lighting from any point in a 360 degree circle slope uh shades the image based on the height data the elevation data so if it's a vertical then it will be white and if it's a horizontal it will be black and everything shaded in between and it's a really good way of identifying um like places where there may have been buildings previously or an area that's been leveled possible camps etc it's a, it's a really amazing tool for that so 
Now, this has been a bit hit and miss. It doesn't always work. Um, I can't get consistency out of ChatGPT, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this prompt will do it for you. So I'm going to put in create a slope shade with a maximum value of 8. Now, in uh, QGIS, I'd usually use a slope value of around 6 um, and scale it up and down according to what I need um, and if you start playing with it you'll see what I mean like if you go too high everything looks flat if you go too low everything looks too sloped now that is completely wrong because it isn't that flat that area so um, slope shade to have max factor of 100 and maximum value actually i'm not going to tinker around with this i was going to try and set it but i can kind of work out change the slope shade to a maximum value of one and hopefully that's going to be roughly about right we want to see the slopes um etc across that scene and it should then be obvious where houses are and where valleys are and where rivers running in valleys and roads etc you should be able to see those things at a glance looking at the map so it's still not right i'm going to do it one last time change the slope shade american spelling sorry um to have have a max value of 0.1 Ooh, two, 0.2 how brave do i feel you can see like as i'm tinkering with it the area around the hill fort is now coming into view those white areas are, are pretty much sheer drops around and we can see there's a valley by the looks of it running across here but we should be able to see more and that's what we want it for some reason it's given us two results it does that sometimes but we pretty much hit it on the he head there so um if we have a look at this is there any way i can download that one it's not gonna let me download that one that's a shame um i could probably create download link or the slope shade it would be nice so you can see it a little bit bigger but you can see what i mean so these are the white areas are very sloped areas the dark areas are flatter areas and you see these white boxes almost with black bits in between. They're, they're structural, so they would have been... Um, aha, we have our link. Oh, it's a big old file. It's coming. Here it is. So, we can zoom in. And the, considering this is 2 meter resolution, like I say, half of what you get online the output is incredible so you can see structures these may these are more likely going to be existing at present but sometimes like here there's an area of flattening um, and that will be worth looking into as to what that might be um, and you can find some really interesting bits and bobs so you can see that over here it's quite good to have it up against a hill shade but this slope will just give you those insights into um, potential roads and trackways that would have been used in the past, um, areas that have been cleared for, for possible uh, living, residential, etc., where they wanted it a bit flatter. I mean, you can see we're pulling out details here. It's, there you can just about make it out on the hill shape but it's clearer there there's there's some sort of circular feature hidden away there there's another one up here there's another one here and slope is is a great tool to help pull that out and you can do other things with chat gpt as well um you can create contours create a contour map uh, i just i'm just gonna ask it to create a contour map and we'll watch it fail because you know it's been a bit funny 
it's gonna uh <laughs> it's gonna be mean to me this time but just have a play you can ask um chat gpt what can you do with this file and it will tell you it will give you an idea of what you can do now sometimes you won't be able to have it all in a conversation like this because it will act up and i think that's because it's relatively new there you go it's created us uh exactly what we wanted or what we asked for which is a contour map of that area too it's honestly for for a very quick analysis of an area to help you investigate it's a really handy tool so go check it out and have some fun thanks for watching uh, don't forget to check out my other videos if you're really in it for the long game if you really like looking at this kind of data then definitely i'd recommend getting started with QGIS and go and check out my other videos. There's a 2024 updated version to help get you started. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.